Hi, my name is Sherelle Drury, and I'm a Senior Business Consultant for Professional Advantage. And today I'd like to introduce you to Dynamics AX 2012 Case Management. Today I'm going to introduce you to Case Management within Dynamics AX 2012. Also illustrate how it can benefit many operations across your business. And also provide an understanding of how to extend your business entities with Case Management. First off, let's discuss some of the pains and challenges that some of your business entities face on a day-to-day -day basis. Your customer service division deal with your customers daily. They get inquiries, they get uh, asked for applications for new customer information. They need to set up different uh, service level agreements. A lot of this information is currently stored on different business systems and databases and laptops and filing cabinets around the office. What we'll hopefully show today is how we can actually centralise all this information and document and, inf and references. We can also take a look at some of the steps that we can take to uh, set up different processes and procedures within that division. Your purchasing manager and your shipping and receiving area also deal with day-to-day -day issues with customers and or suppliers. And this could do with damaged stock or the way stock has been packaged or sent or safety issues. Again, this can be recorded and also reported to the management. Human Resource Manager. They need to deal and work with employees and contractors on a daily basis. They work with grievances and they define certain processes and procedures that need to be managed with each employee. An Internal Business Auditor needs a tracking mechanism for compliance violations and this could be something as simple as monitoring your monthly business expenses where someone is consistently going over their allowance. What did Microsoft do in this release? Well, they've provided the ability to centrally manage questions, issues and situations. And these are in areas of customer service, vendor management, employee grievances, collections and auditing. They've incorporated the capability to standardise and apply case processes and they've enabled users to leverage organisational knowledge. Now, some of the components in action today. I mean, case management, you know, falls over CRM and supply chain, inventory, projects, um, financials. But today we're going to mainly look at customer service and support. Now some of the concepts and definitions that we're just going to go through. When I talk about a case, what I'm referring to is an actual record or an issue, question or situation that a company may face. The actual case category is a classification of that particular case. And the case process is a definable systematic approach in resolving the case. And finally, we have knowledge articles, which is basically a repository of documents and links to assist in resolving an issue or a situation. In the product demo today, I'm going to do two demos. The first de demo is going to be the actual case configuration. So I'll actually go through how to set up a case category definition, a case process setup, and also load up knowledge articles. The second demo will be the actual maintenance of the case. So we'll look at recording a case, defaulting knowledge articles to that particular case and then actually processing and the activities involved with that case. So my first demo I'm going to create the actual case process, I'm going to add a knowledge article and then I'm going to define the case categories. Let's now go to the demo. I'm just going to go into my sales and marketing, into periodic, under knowledge articles. I'm going to create a new knowledge article and I'm going to start off by creating a new folder. So I'm just going to click on the top level here, go knowledge article, change that to folder and call it returns management and OK. As you can see I've created a new folder here. Now I'm actually going to attach two files to that knowledge article. So I'm just going to go into my documents. First one I'm going to first one I'm going to attach is my return policy for damaged goods. So I'm going to create a new one for my return policy for my exchange goods. So we now have two new documents that are associated with returns management. Next what I want to do is actually create a new case process. So case process I'm going to say new Returns management. It's going to be a case process. Okay, now I've created my returns management 
and what it's done in the tree section here is actually put in the new returns management name and it's created a stage one so I can go in and rename this stage now for this particular process I would like to see a photo come through before the actual authority is given to return the goods first thing I need to do is determine whether or not that the exchange or the inquiry is for an actual stock item or for a special specially configured item so stage one I'm going to type in here determine if it's a stock or special request item next stage I want to actually go in there and create a new level and say I'd like to get photos of damage and the next level and again there's two ways to create a new level I can drop down on the action button or I can right click on the returns management and create a level in here and the last stage I want to get is the fact that I want to get approval that I can actually return or exchange the goods now you do have the ability to actually put workflows on these as well and you also can have sub processes underneath here and if I just go to this case process template one I can show you where it's actually creating um, activities so this is creating a task and this one here is creating an action and this is creating an event and for each level in here this and then the follow-up creates an actual appointment in someone's calendar so these are actually updating Outlook and update, updating your work tasks within AX as well we can get quite sophisticated with the actual process and the setup of how this flows so in the returns management we have three steps in there I've got one to determine whether the stock is and who's responsible for actually doing that I then have the fact that we need to get pictures done of that particular damage and then we need to get approval now once I've done that I'm going to actually go in and create my actual case category so under sales I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to create a child case category under sales and I'm going to call it return management and that's all I'm going to do there so that's now added that in there so underneath here I'm now going to actually set up two child categories one called return item and I'm going to create the other one called an exchanged item under the actual return item I'm actually going to go in and put in a process and in here I'm going to add in a case process that we created earlier so under returns management is the one I want to actually add in there now if I wanted I could also put in other things like a particular worker who's responsible so I can actually put in and I can also attach any questionnaires in there as well so if I wanted an actual questionnaire to go through at this point and give them a set of questions that they need to go through and answer so far what we have done we have created an actual case process we've added knowledge articles and we've defined an actual case category now in doing that what we have done is basically gone through and standardized the organizational processes by actually setting up these actual case process setup it also provides the knowledge articles and those a fast at resolution in how these should be managed you can also define categories specific to an organization's process For the second part of the demo we're going to look at case maintenance we're going to create a customer case take action on the case process and view the knowledge articles for the case category okay so I'm going to go to my all customers and I'm going to select a customer who I'd like to do a return on I'm going to select sunset wholesalers I want to actually link this case to an actual sales order so I'm going to go to the cell tab go to orders and go in and have a look at all sales orders this automatically filters on the customer orders for this particular customer well, as you can see the bottom ones already in actual return order so I'm going to go to this one here number 34 and I can see that the customer has bought several plasma TVs now this customer is actually stating that uh, one of these TVs was actually shattered so they would like a refund or an exchange so first thing we do is we click on this order go to the general tab and go to the cases and create a new case we give it a category 
and we're going to call it an actual return item. We're going to make the status as in process because we're going to continue with it straight away. And I'm just going to go say request for return. You can give it a priority here if you like, depending on the customer and how important it is. I can go in and associate it with an actual department. And because I selected it was actually a return item, you'll notice from the previous demo, it's automatically linked it to the case process of returns management. So it tells me that I have to actually go through some sort of process on this. So when I create this, the fact that it is linked to the returns management process. The other area we want to look at on this form is the case log. Now this is where we update and enter any of the interactions that we've had with the client um, or any changes that there may have been to the actual case itself. So we hit the create button and this will open up the detailed form where we can actually add additional information to the actual case. So I'm going to click the edit. Now you've got a choice of clicking the edit at the top on the menu bar here in the icon or down the bottom there's the pencil that we can click on edit. First thing I'm going to do is add in a primary contact who I've spoken with with the client. You'll notice here that it's already put the case category in there for us. And the other thing that I can do here is actually look at the status. Now my actual status on the actual case is in process because that's what I set it to originally. The other status is our status of our process. Now we've determined if the item is a stock item or a special request item. It was the TV item. Next we've actually got to get pictures of the actual damage. Now the reason why I update this status is that if I'm not here tomorrow someone else can come in here and see exactly where we're at. If we had a service level agreement that information here could be linked to this actual case or it could be linked when we created it. This is the case log, so I can actually add in a description here that I have requested the photos of the damage from the actual client. Associations, well here's where I can associate it with the sales order and later down the track we can actually also associate it with the return order so we can actually keep the full process linked. Knowledge articles, and this is where we can actually link and add those knowledge articles that we actually associated as into what the actual policy is. So here we can actually go in and add. Go to Article, Returns Management, and Return Policy for Damaged Goods. Admin is purely just when it was opened and created. So once I'm happy with this, I can then close this case file. Places in which I can um, look this up, if I go back to my home page and look at my common, you'll see here Cases. I can actually look at all my cases. And I can see here I've got a new one that's opened for Sunset Wholesalers and it shows me here that it's a request for a return item associated to myself. I can see down the bottom here it has the logs that it was, when it was created the, an actual request has gone out from the client to actually send the photos in. Now I can actually go in and actually attach the photos because they've been sent in the client so I can pretend it's the next day. Go in. So I want to attach the photos now. So I'm going to pretend now it's the next day and the client has sent the photos into me so I'm just going to edit this particular case, go in and attach the photos and I'm also going to go change my status now to say get approval and I'm also going to update my case log. So I've just updated my log to say that pictures received and now awaiting approval. If this was linked to a workflow it would send a workflow notification to my manager to say please look at. I haven't linked a workflow to this one so I'll go tap on my manager's shoulder or I'll send an email saying can you please take a look at this particular case. Once that's been approved and they've come back I can then go in and do the actual return order and link the return order to this particular case. To do that all I need to do is go back into edit and I want to associate this now with the return order. So I go into add the entity type is actually a sales order and I need to go in and select. Now I'm actually going to do a filter here on the customer to make it a little bit easier for me to locate and I'm going to select this return order and that way then I now have the return order associated with the actual original sales order. And once I'm happy with this I can actually change this status to actually being now closed. Now let's just recap on what I've just shown you. So we've been able to create a customer case um, and take action on that. We've looked at different systems of recording the actual case, um, how we could actually organise the knowledge that is usually scattered around a company and put it into one location 
and link it to the actual case, easy and accessible. We're able to standardise the actual process and outline for all users so they can easily see it. And it was a lot faster in relation to the status and resolving and the resolution of this case. So what I showed today was basically an introduction to case management, looking at both the case configuration and case management, how case management can benefit many departments across an entire organisation, and how to extend your functionality with case management. In, to summarise, it's basically centrally managed questions and issues and situations for many diverse business processes. We've also looked at um, to ensure an organisational processes are followed consistently, enable users to leverage organisational knowledge and extend your entities with case management. Hope this has been helpful and thank you very much for your time.